if your family are overdressed for what I have planned today. It's just casual stuff, but it all looks so fancy together. I personally can't believe that my channel exists already for such a long time and I have never shown you how to make an OB. So we're gonna change that today. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And I think without further ado, let's just look at the fabrics I'm going to use to make this Hanhaba Obi. These are the two fabrics I have settled on. As you probably already can tell, I'm a tiny Star Wars geek. And um, this is my first Star Wars inspired kimono item. One of my students, hi Amber, <laughs> has this here as a Han Erdi and I was kind of like, this is just the perfect Han Habobi fabric. So I have this imported from the US. It was insanely expensive because it is an imported fabric. We're not gonna talk about it. I'm really looking forward to this Obi and I think the two fabrics work really well together and look really on theme. And before we can cut this out, we have to talk about what fabric I have chosen because that is a question I probably receive with the most. What kind of fiber, what kind of textiles actually suitable for kimono? I am someone who has studied historical kimono. Historically, when you were part of the upper class and you had the chance to import textiles or lay a hand of imported textiles, they used what ever they laid their hand on because it's something fresh it's something new in the kimono fashion and it was new to japan and then the broader population would like it and they would try to recreate it and this is how some of very popular kimono textiles were actually developed because they were just recreations of what they have seen in textiles that were imported from india china and even further away. <laughs> so it is only logical to say you can basically use whatever fabric you can lay your hand on. For example, my Star Wars fabric, my Darth Vader fabric is actually a print cotton and the glittery one is actually, I think it's a jersey fabric. It's super stretchy. I'm not looking forward to sew with this, but this is what I'm using today. And I basically just chose it by pattern and what would match. This is how I chose my fabrics. But now let's really get started with cutting this out. The reason why I have chosen two fabrics is because most Hanhavobi, not all of them, most are revisable. You have a different front and a different back fabric. You have basically a right and a wrong side, but you can show both if you want to. And that makes it actually really cool because then you have two OBs in one and that's amazing. You also can twist and turn it and show sometimes both sides or not. That is completely up to you. And if you want to learn how to tie this type of OB and how to play with it a tiny bit more, I have a whole playlist with only OB Musubi, OB styles on my channel and make sure to check that out. I will link it in the top right corner and down below. So while I'm cutting this out, let's talk a tiny bit about the sizing. Hanhaba obi means actually translated half width obi. And that is because when the Hanhaba obi developed, the obi width was already set at 8 sun, which is about 30, 31 centimeter. But Hanhaba obi's width is actually yonsun, 4 sun, which is half of the width, which is about 15 centimeter. And that is why they're called half width obi. So usually a hanhaba obi should be about 15 and I think the widest I actually have in my closet is 18 centimeter. How wide you want to have the obis to balance out your whole look depends on your silhouette. So when you're somehow on the plus size side you will have to make the obi wider. By the way, in Japan, when you're really tall, this is also considered as plus size. 
so you want to have the OB mold on the wider side which means you want to go up to 18 centimeter width. Conclusion of that is when you make a hand hub or we make it in a width between 15 and 18 centimeter, keep it rather on the wider side when you're considered as tall or plus size. When you're a really petite person, you can actually have a 15 centimeter width. OB. Let's talk length. Actually, Hanhaba Obi have a length that differs between, I think the shortest I actually have in my wardrobe is 3 meter 65, I think. And the longest I have in my wardrobe is actually four and a half meter long. This is the range we're actually working with. But here's a tip that I give you. When you make Obi, keep it between 3 meter 80 and 4 meter 20. Now for my plus size people, when you want to have an OB that actually fits you, try to keep it between 4 meter and 4 meter 40 or 4 meter 10 and 4 meter 50. It's always a 40 centimeter range we're working with. <laughs> and you will need short OB as much as long OB because different OB musubi require different lengths of OB. So these are some of the factors you can consider when deciding on the length and width of your OB. So in conclusion, it's first of all your silhouette and then it's also what you want to tie with this specific OB. Okay, so let's get to the sewing machine and sew these parts together. I have sewed together all the pieces um, the pattern matching of the uh, Star Wars fabric or the Darth Vader fabric was not easy to do. I had to be really wasteful with it and um, I almost used up all the fabric that I have purchased and I couldn't make it completely work. I would have to ha I would have had to buy like 10 centimeter more. But no, you won't be able to tell so it's gonna be fine. And now I'm pinning together the two layers after ironing the seam allowance flat not on the jersey fabric the stretch fabric though because you can iron this one so it's gonna be really interesting how we're gonna move on in this um, journey and then we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these two long strips of fabric together And it's all sewn together. This is how it looks now. You can see the two sides, they're connected on the bottom. We'll see if this is gonna turn, gonna be the bottom or the top edge. But right now it's one edge. And I think it looks really good. I was a tiny bit afraid that the stretch fabric actually would stretch out and wrinkle up, but that's not your issue. That's my issue with this fabric. I would just recommend when you do this for the first time, use simple cotton fabric because it's gonna be way easier to work with. And yeah, also the seams here on the black fabric are really visible as I have feared. I actually thought to put it on diagonal so it looks a tiny bit more purposeful in case that seam ends up on the front but I noticed that I won't be able to kind of figure this out to make this a one day video so I kept it straight and I was thinking about probably putting some embellishment on it but first I want to tie it and see if the seam actually shows up on the front if it doesn't show up no one cares you don't know how many always I have in my closet that are antique and second hand and have really weird seams somewhere we're gonna do probably a video on that one day anyway what you're gonna do now is we're gonna put in interfacing and what you can get for this is of course 
Where did I put my interfacing? Ah, I thought I put it here to show you. Interfacing. There should be a roll of interfacing somewhere in this room and it's not. Where's my interfacing? It's gone. I don't know. So you can use the normal iron on interfacing you can find in a normal sewing supply store. But interfacing should not be pieced together. You need one long strip and you can go to a sewing supply store and buy a long strip and then cut this and you can make more than one ob out of it i just don't like the cutting part of it so i usually use an actual ob interfacing which is called obishin in japanese i always have a bunch here this is my stock of ob interfacing this is the brand that i usually get because it's cheap it's only thousand yen which is about ten dollar or ten euro and the cool thing it is actually already in the width of an ob which is really cool um, but it is way too long this is 4.7 meter so this is used for nagoya obi that's why it's this long and i would just have to cut it down i have a second one here let's just see how long that is so i probably don't have to cut this one it's a different brand and now it's also it's four meter 70 it's okay so i'm gonna cut this one here into four meter 20 because i've decided to make the ob four meter 20 and because this is not an iron on interfacing this is just interfacing i have this iron on tape it works like a double-sided tape for um i can talk for sewing so you can just iron this on it's called melt fuse in english here <laughs> i usually use this to make this one here um, iron onable just on the edges on the two edges not on the ends i'm going to keep the ends as they are and i'm going to iron it on so first of all i have to iron the center seam here i will have to iron it flat you usually want to iron it flat. I'm not gonna do this with this fabric because again, I can iron this one here. So I'm just gonna fold it over to one side and only iron the cotton fabric. I aligned the obishin on one side of the pattern so it would be straight on the um, Darth Vader pattern and I just sewed the uh, iron this straight on and then I sewed always to this to the other side to get the air out of the fabric to the other side and also secure the obishin onto the other side. So last part I have to do is, as you can see here, I have way too much fabric peeking out on both sides because my fabric is wider than my obishin actually is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some scissors and I'm gonna cut along the obishin and cut away this excess fabric. Let's get started. And now we're going to turn this and we're going to fold the obi shin or like the obi in half. And there are three ways now to sew this together. You have variation A, which means you leave open the two ends and you just sew the one side together, then you turn it inside out and then you blind stitch the ends in place. Variation B is going to be you sew one end, sew the edge to approximately the center, leave about 10-20 centimeters there open 
and then you sew from there again the edge down to the end and also the end and then you turn it through the opening you have left open in the middle and you're gonna blind stitch down those 10 to 20 centimeter opening you have left in the middle of the OB. And then last but not least, you have sewing first the ends and then you're gonna blind stitch it all the way. <laughs> Which is, by the way, the most traditional way to sew an OB. We're not gonna do this, especially not with this fabric because this fabric is better machine sewn. But seriously, it's actually getting quite late today and we're running out of daylight. And I'm getting a headache because it's really hot in this room and as I said, no AC here. So I probably will not finish this off today. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna rest today and we're gonna finish this off another day. So see you. So I told you there are a few ways to actually sew this down and I decided to sew it down in a hybrid so I could actually show you how it's gonna look like in at least two ways. I've already turned it inside out and ironed it and this is the side that I just kept open. I kept the end open so I could just pull it through and with this pattern what is really good here is because this is a check pattern you really want to have straight seams everywhere I could now just tuck the seam allowance in into here and make sure that this is really nicely aligning with the pattern and now we'll have to sew this down by hand I'm gonna blind stitch it on the inside so I don't have a seam on the top if you don't mind a seam you could also sew it down by machine but I'm not a fan of stitching, seeing stitching, because in kimono you are actually always supposed to hide your seams. The other side, this is the side I machine finished, turned it inside out, because I kept an opening here in the center of the OB. You can see I kept a good 20 centimeter opening here, so I could easily turn this through. And I tucked the seam allowance in and I will have to blind stitch it. But what you can also can see, it's not really straight here. It's not really following the pattern. I did a really, really crappy job with sewing this, obviously. <clears throat> so I will probably open this up and redo this. So this is gonna be really, really straight and nice. But that is gonna be it. That's what I'm gonna do now. And then it's finally time for the reveal. And that is the Hanhaba Obi. I think it turned out really great. Right now the Obi is still very stiff to tie. No worries, that is absolutely normal. It's gonna get a tiny bit softer the more you're actually wearing and tying it. I have tried a few ways to actually tie it and I gave it a tiny twist on the front so you could see the back of the fabric, the actual black of it. That's one of my favorite tips and tricks when you only wear a Hanhaba Obi and a kimono to give it a tiny bit more accent or interest on the front. When you think that's already it, there's an encore. As one does, I was shopping in the Tokyo garment district and I found this fabric in an outlet fabric store. And it is polyester and it has some stiffness to it. And when I saw it, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect Hiko Obi. So I thought in this video, we're gonna make a tiny encore and actually sew the easiest obi you can make and that's a hiko obi. Hiko obi don't have any interfacing they're basically just very long scarves that are used as 
obi and they exist in various textiles i have of course polyester hiko obi i have silk hiko obi and i also have cotton hiko obi and there are also rami hiko obi out there they also have all quite a different texture you have quite stiff hiko obi like this fabric here is but they're also super soft hiko obi that barely hold a shape you can see you can basically turn any fabric into a hiko obi with this fabric especially i was actually hoping because it's not this wide as you can see i was actually hoping i could just use it as it is as a hiko obi won't work it's way too wide so i brought one of my favorite hiko obi i actually wore this one in the beginning of this video by the way I measured this Heiko Obi and found out that this is 30 and a half centimeter wide. So I figured I'm gonna give me about a 30 to 31 centimeter width on my new Heiko Obi because there's gonna be a seam allowance. And I found out when I measured it that a tiny bit more than 31 centimeter, one of the dots, row of dots is gonna end. So I cut along this end of the row to cut this fabric. By the way, cutting along pattern or motifs on your fabric is the best way to make your sewing project actual straight. And I'm gonna hem down the edges with a rolled hem foot. Come on, how easy is that? While I'm sewing this down, let's talk about the length of an hiko obi. Again, the length is actually up to you, but I recommend you keep it between 3 meter 80 and 4 meter 50. Most hiko obi that are made for adult women nowadays have the length of 4 meter 50 because we have a trend of really, really big and fluffy obi musubi right now, and you can't recreate them when you have an obi shorter than 4 meter 50. So I personally, this time, chose to make the hiko obi 4 meter 50. So nice, look at this. Perfect rolled hem. Okay, and now to the ends here. And as you could see at the ends, I decided to do a regular rolled hem, not a really narrow one. I just folded the fabric in and sewed over it. And here is the finished ob i think it looks really good it took me an hour to finish this off and now i really want to tie this and show you so let's go The Heko Ubi turned out super cute too. I mean, it's just a perfect fabric I have found for it. And I think this shows how easy actually it is to make an Obi. And the harder part is I think actually how to tie it. So feel free to check out my tutorials of how to work with different Obi. Of course, this is not my only and last Obi tutorial that's gonna come. So no worries, we're gonna tackle other Obi too. Until then, I wish you a lot of fun with trying to make your own Obi. When you have made one, please make pictures, upload them on Instagram and tag me so I can see them, like them and hopefully also share it. Anyway, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, leave me a thumb up or a comment down below or share this video with your friends that would really help me out a lot and if you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher feel free to subscribe i would be really happy to have you here and i talk to you in my next kimono adventure bye fertig jetzt haben wir es jetzt hoffentlich ja